government likens liver to a cancerous tumor. These people are systematically oppressed by their own government. We've been waking up to horrific stories every day, heartbreaking images separating mothers from their children. They live in a police state. There's an ethnic group in China being systematically surveilled and imprisoned in an attempt to essentially wipe their culture off the map. A UN panel says the region resembles a massive internment camp. For the last two years, the Western-funded media that operates across the globe have been flooding us with countless videos, articles, and aggressive internet memes, perhaps with the goal of shaping our minds to react in a certain way when we hear the words Xinjiang. They've described this Chinese autonomous region as an open-air prison and as something comparable to the Holocaust. Because of all the times the Western media have lied, I've completely lost trust with them, especially after the US invaded Iraq based on one big lie. The province of Xinjiang. It's more than four times the size of Germany and borders eight countries. It's home to some 11 million Uyghurs. This clip is a perfect example of propaganda by omission. Notice that the map is showing the countries that border the Chinese province of Xinjiang. But wait a second. Do you notice that a few countries aren't being shown? Right here is actually Afghanistan. Literally the most important reason why many Chinese Uyghurs had become radicalized and even waged jihad is because Afghanistan and its never-ending American war lies right on the Xinjiang border. But of course, the Western media doesn't want you to know that. With that said, I knew that I had to see Xinjiang with my own eyes in order to know the truth. This is my trip to Xinjiang in late April 2020 during the worst pandemic in a hundred years. And this is yet another beautiful tree-lined street in Yurumuchi, Xinjiang. And at the side, you can see the barbed wire, which is a common sight here. It just goes to show that the Chinese don't take chances. Once there is a terrorist attack, they go into defensive mode. But what are the Chinese famous for? The Great Wall of China, right? They're really good at defense. I don't think they're very aggressive. I don't feel Chinese are like attackers, but they're very good at defending. Maybe that's why they've survived for so long. And you might look at this and go, wow, that looks crazy, all this barbed wire. But actually, you know, I saw this in a lot of places, like Shanghai has a lot of walls with barbed wire because Shanghai used to be a French concession. So they're keeping the Chinese out of the French areas. And I've seen in Hong Kong as well. So, I mean, you will see these barbed wire fences in other places. But I think it's important just to realize the history that about the terrorist attacks, the separatist attacks. There are other places in the world that are like this, like Israel, for example. You will see armed guards everywhere. I mean, Quebec, where I'm from, like in Canada, we have the separatist movement. There hasn't been violence since maybe 1970s. So it is very different than here, where it was like 10 years ago, there were knife attacks here and terrorist attacks. Every situation needs different responses. So it seems like school has just let out, so all the students are coming outside right now. Lots of kids. Ending their day, getting sent home. There must be a school over here. What a bright sunny day today. So yeah, Xinjiang, it seems like Xinjiang did open their schools up quite a bit earlier than the rest of uh, China. They've done a really good job controlling the virus. So, um, yeah. I don't know what this white stuff is. It must be uh, the tree, tree pollen or whatever. It looks really nice, like snow. But yeah, look at all these kids coming out of school. Super bright. Look at all these kids. So I rarely get a bathtub when I get a hotel room because I stay in really cheap hotels. That's how uh, I get to travel so much. But this hotel comes with a bath. And you really gotta love Uyghur restaurants. They are so charming. Look, this tea kettle just popping up and down. Oh, no. Uh, yeah.
So this is called a beef naan bread and uh, it's supposed to be specialty here. So let's try it out. I think I can use my hands to eat it. It's very, very, very hot. They handmade it just for me. I don't, I don't know how to eat it. It's falling apart. I do like this. It's very, very, very good. Very, very good. Um, it was uh, 28 kwai, so about $6 uh, Canadian. And it tastes like a freshly made pizza and naan bread with meat in it. Yeah, it's very, very good. It's oily and crispy, and the inside's soft. It's hard to eat with one hand though, because it, it, it's, kind of, it's really soft, it kind of falls apart. All right, so this is Xinjiang uh, milk tea. And I just want to say that this Ronan Bing is so damn good. It's handmade. You can just see where the chef rolled the crust. And they made it uh, fresh to order. It took 30 minutes, so you need some patience because it did take time. Now I'm going to try some of this. It's super light. It's not sweet and has a very light taste. Okay, it's very interesting. It's like real milk, real tea. So, yeah, it doesn't have all the added stuff that you get, like with bubble tea. So this is what Xinjiang really looks like. Well, at least in a big city. We're gonna go to smaller towns today. I'm headed. I'm gonna take a train to Altai, Altai city. And we'll see small towns Xinjiang. Um, yeah, other than having a lot of random police in intersections and things like that, it's, it's pretty much a totally normal city. Especially for China, like a tier, tier 3, maybe tier 2 city. Um, here's a selfie of me crossing the streets. So weird to be doing this. I don't know why I'm doing it. I just want to walk around this area because it seems like it's a very... It's a very Uyghur area, so just walk around and see the people, see the restaurants. So pretty much everyone in this area is Uyghur. Um, I have found the Uyghur area in Yunamuchi. Here you got all your alcohols and stuff. Beers, and you got your baijiu and wine. So you got some nice canned fruits here and coffee fruits. Wow. Oh, you got spaghetti, you got noodles. Hmm. Yep, some breads here. And you got vegetables in the fridge, which is nice. I think it keeps the bugs off. I mean, it's a good idea. Here, so your daily items here. I'm on the train to Altai right now. There's people of all different kinds, like Chinese Han, Uyghur, Chinese, probably can't stand. You can see it's like a three, three bed thing. So it's like one, two, three. Yeah, it's a nine hour train trip. So I'll sleep and then I'll be there in the morning. So you get to save money on the hotel, it's really nice.
Bye, Yumichi. Time for Altai. So everyone had to scan this QR code, and what's really interesting is when you scan this QR code, it tells in the last 14 days where you've been, so if you need to be quarantined or not. Okay, I just woke up, and uh, I think it's like probably 7 a.m. We're not there yet. Here's what it looks like on the train. Heading to Altai, where I might be quarantined again. Yay! COVID traveling, guys. COVID traveling, full of excitement. You never know. When you're gonna get quarantined or no? When you're gonna get quarantined? How long you're gonna get quarantined? You know why? Because every region in Xinjiang is different. It's a huge landmass. It's a huge area and each region has its own laws. So even though I already got quarantined at Urumqi and got tested, going to a new area, the authorities might want to do it again. Is that a concentration camp? Is that what I'm seeing right now? Oh, no, I think it's just a factory with some delivery trucks. I know, we're in Xinjiang. Anything could be a concentration camp. Oh, there's a yurt. See that? There's a yurt right there. Okay, this looks like a pretty new station. Looks like a new bus station. Very nice. <laughs> the conductor. <laughs> Oh god, I'm gonna get quarantined. Look at those workers. Oh god, I'm gonna get it again. I'm gonna be the most quarantined person in China by the end of this. They're so strict, but that's how they're controlling it. It looks like a golf course. It's so pretty here. Oh my gosh, with the rivers. And the... Uh, wow, it's so pretty. <laughs> 我来 乌鲁木齐的时候就每天吃很多肉<笑> 
I'm gonna take the train back. So I, I had a choice of staying for 14 days for the quarantine or to just go back. So obviously I opted for going back. But outside you can see it's really, really, really nice. Like pure blue skies, mountains everywhere, and there's a flowing river that you can hear roaring by. I don't, I'm not sure if you can see it. I don't think you can. But the river's right there next to the mountain. And this is all I can see from my window. Just a little shot, I think. I don't know if that's the hotel or a little parking lot down there. I wish I could stay here. I really do. So just to give you a little shot of the food here, I think they gave me some milk, which is going to be amazing. I'm sure it's like super fresh. Um, some tomatoes. Oh, my nose is stuffed. Uh, I think that's like maybe chicken and vegetables and then a thing of rice. And then finally, a soup. Wow, so lots and lots of food. I want to thank you all for watching the whole video. If you really like my work, please consider supporting my channel. Unfortunately, I only have WeChat Pay right now, and I have not set up a PayPal. If you have any friends that have WeChat, perhaps they can help you to send some support. Um, I would really appreciate it. I spent about 20 to 30 hours on this video, so it really does mean a lot, as this is like my second full-time job. Anyways, I hope you're having a great day. Peace and love.